So what I'd like to go over today are some thoughts on developing a plan for the distribution phase of retirement. Um, as a point of thought, this is something you want to do before you retire, preferably, and probably at least five years out would be the best to start retiring. I've heard some of a uh, number of bloggers call it like the retirement red zone, the five years before and the five years after. So let's get going. All right. So I just wanted to point out what I think would be the, the main goals for almost everybody for the distribution phase. Um, avoiding experiencing money death. I think we can all agree nobody wants to run out of money before they die. Um, minimizing taxes so we all have a little more to spend on ourselves and others. To avoid becoming a burden to others and probably for most people leaving a legacy. And that will have a big effect on your tax planning if you want to leave a legacy to something other than a charity. Um, we're looking when we build our own distribution plan to go for good. Don't try and do perfect. The only person who can create a per perfect distribution plan for you is the executor of your will. And the reason being, almost all the key variables in your distribution plan are unknowns. So the best thing to do is go for a good plan that you can live with based on the projections you see for the future of all these variables, and then revisit the plan every few years when those projections change significantly. So what are these main variables? They're gonna be your portfolio returns. What are the inflation rates? How long are you and your spouse gonna live? Will you or your spouse require any extended long-term care? Any changes to tax laws? And for those leaving a legacy, changes to the death tax laws. Um, I thought today I'd just go over a very simple example just to get people thinking so, you know, it'll help spur the questions after we're done this, because this is mainly a presentation to try and drive people into thinking about it and then asking a few questions, and then we can all learn from each other's questions. So my example is a 65-year-old couple. Each is eligible for approximately 30000 from Social Security at 65. The couple has $2 million in pre-tax IRAs. The couple has no other retirement assets or sources of income, just to keep it simple for the discussion. So I looked at it and the couple is better off waiting till 70 and they have the money to wait to 70 to defer social security. So they're gonna defer social security to 70, which will get them to approximately 42,000 each. I went a little conservative here, it'd actually be a little higher. So in order to do the delay, they're gonna need to cover their bills during the delay since they intend to retire at 65. So they take 400 grand from their IRAs, still in the IRA, but they, they move it into short-term bonds or cash, basically, T-bills, to cover the five years until they intend to claim Social Security. In this case, since we're doing a Bogleheads discussion, and I know Christine Benz has done a number of presentations, including a few on this particular topic, the couple chooses a safe withdrawal rate from her morning, uh, Morningstar report from last year. So they pick 3.3%. So the two million minus the 400 grand that they put in cash is allocated to whatever portfolio allocation they've decided to use in retirement. So they take that 1.6 million, pardon me? You always ask me. So they take that 1.6 million, multiply it by the 3.3% and they come up with $52,800 a year in annual withdrawals. So once they're in retirement, they'll have 84,000 from Social Security and the 52,800 from um, their withdrawal rate from their assets, which will give them $136,800 a year in gross income. The 400,000 gives them 80,000, so they'll be 4,000 short from 65 to 80, but close enough. So I have a question here for you to think about. Please don't answer, just think about for yourself. How much net income do you think this couple has to spend yearly in retirement based on that $136,000 gross? I have noticed in talking to colleagues and, and friends that a lot of people overestimate their retirement taxes. So what is that number? The couple will owe $11,185 at age 70 to the IRS. And depending on what state they live in, obviously the low state taxes. As you heard before from Greg, I live in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania does not, they tax your 401k inputs while you work. So they don't tax your 401k withdrawals 
once you retire and they do not tax social security or federal pensions for that matter. Um, so if this couple was living in my state, that's all they would owe. Their net income would be $125,615 a year. Um, so that's, I find that when talking to people that seems to be a lot higher than people expect. So what are your distribution phase actionables? Well, you're gonna have to pick a withdrawal rate and probably a method whether, you know, some people want to use the bucket method, some people want to use a uh, safe withdrawal rate with guide rails, some just want to use a flat safe withdrawal rate. Um, you can, you know, you're obviously going to be able to play with the order of withdrawals. One thing I'd like to state here, um, don't follow rules of thumb. Rules of thumb are written for your average retiree. From my knowledge of everyone I've ever met who's a member of the Bogleheads, we are not average retirees. We have significantly more savings than the average person. So if you follow the rule of thumb where you blow through your taxable account first, then start touching your pre-tax IRA and then go to your Roth, you are end up likely paying a good bit more in taxes than if you actually put together a long-term plan out for the projected length of your retirement and then make your withdrawals based on that plan to minimize taxes. Obviously, you get to choose when you pick Social Security. Um, rule of thumb, uh, especially talking, uh, listening to Mike Piper, who's uh, an expert on Social Security and has a nice secu Social Security calculator on his website, um, is the high earner should definitely wait till 70 if at all possible. Um, the, the lower earner, it's less of an issue. His calculator will give you a number. It has a tendency to run very little change if you play with it for the lower of the two earners, especially if there's a significant difference in income. Um, managing tax challenges. Now here's where a well-funded retiree gets into having fun in their distribution phase. Income, income related monthly adjustment amount or IRMA surcharges on your Medicare can be one thing you clearly wanna manage depending on the amount of income you're likely to generate. Um, your required minimum distributions will affect this. And if you follow the rule of thumb and wait, your pre-tax income or your pre-tax investments will grow to the point where your RMDs could be quite large and kick you into IRMA surcharges. Um, and also net investment income tax. That's at 200,000 for singles and 250,000 for married couples, but it is not adjusted for inflation. So as time goes by, your income could get closer and closer as you raise it for inflation. Roth conversions are a wonderful way to try and manage this. Um, Long-term care insurance is just a decision one has to make one way or the other. Um, obviously, people can get into purchasing annuities, QLACs, DIAs, anything like that. Um, one thing with managing tax challenges for those who want to have a legacy, remember that the stretch IRA has disappeared. So if you're going to leave money to your children or grandchildren, they will have to dispense of that money out of the IRA in a 10-year period. So if it's a pre-tax IRA that you're giving to them, it may fall, especially your children, during their peak earning years. So when you look at whether you want to do um, Roth conversions or not, you may be looking at your future tax rate, or you may choose, since you intend to give that Roth IRA, to your children, you may actually want to look at what their tax rate will be and what the effects of giving them a large inheritance, which they would have to take out in 10 years, what that would do to their tax rate. You may actually do Roth conversions higher than you would have for your own tax preferences, since that's where the money might be intended. So that's basically the end of the slides. I'm hoping we can get into a nice energetic discussion on the topic. Mm -hmm.